All right, welcome back. Uh, today's project, we're going to make some uh, tools for the glass shop. Uh, these are graphite. Uh, it's, a, it's a marble mold if you just have one side, but when you put the two sides together, you get a great set of marble tongs that are really useful for handling big, hot glass marbles. Uh, not only for shaping, but for uh, moving them around, taking them in and out of your kiln, etc. So here we are starting with just some big rough chunks of graphite I had sitting around the shop. Uh, the reason that those are round, uh, they, they came out of a nuclear reactor for absorbing alpha emissions or something. Uh, and the plutonium rods went down in the center core there. So I did check them with the Geiger counter and I didn't get anything off of them. So uh, still using good ventilation just because it's a lot of powdery graphite. We've uh, cut it out with a um, big plug cutting drill bit on the drill press. Then I'm going to put it in the lathe with a little four or three jaw chuck and uh, kind of square it up, true off the ends, uh, smooth it down because uh, that plug cutter didn't line up quite perfectly. It leaves a little overlap. So a little bit of lathe work. I'll clean up the outside, straighten it up, and then I'll flip it around in the jaws so that the whole thing is nice and straight and true and sanded down and clean. And do be sure and use uh, uh, you know, a dust collector on these. You don't want to be breathing all this graphite dust. Now, if you do on some of the processes save the graphite, you can use it for other shop projects like making uh, electroforming conductive paint or even as a lubricant. So just going in and, and shaping that to where we've got like an inverted cone. And that is going to be the profile that will allow us to shape pretty much any size marble from about a half inch up to about three inches on one of these pretty comfortably. And then back to sanding it up a little bit. There we go. That's what we needed, our little inverted cone. We'll have to put a handle on it. So uh, in practice, I'm going to make two of those. But if you're only making a single-sided mold, you can do one. Got it lined up. I actually had it marked out there where that top dead center was. And then this is the uh, drill size that matches the tap for doing quarter inch by 20, which is going to be the all thread handle uh, that's the backbone of this tool. So this is not a quarter inch drill bit. It's somewhat undersized, so it allows you to tap the threads. And even though we're going to through bolt this graphite portion so it does not depend on threads, we are going to thread it so that it's extra secure in the handles and does not have a tendency to rotate out of alignment. <clears throat> Here we are just hand tapping it. The graphite's really soft. It taps very nicely. It makes its own lubrication as it goes. Just spin that out and remove the tap. There we go. Knock the graphite out and there we go. Uh, quarter inch by 20 shaft hole all the way through. And we got two of them because uh, I'm going to be doing the molds and the tongs on this uh, video. So I'll move on to the next step here. Now, this is actually the fun part working with the uh, the wood on the wood lathe. It's uh, it's very zen. Uh, I could you know get mesmerized by sitting there doing the lathe work. Now this is black walnut, and I've cut off about a three quarter by three quarter inch. Uh, rectangular diameter and uh, I'm sure it's not diameter but it's a rectangular width and then it's about six inches from side to side when I chuck it in there and I'm gonna lose about a half inch on either side just for uh, material that fits up to the lathe and then the inside five inches will be uh, the handle that we'll be coming up with so this is a, a an old planer blade that I'm using for uh, a tool there it's pointy on one end, rounded on the other, and it holds a very good edge. So I do most of my little lathe work turning with that one. And uh, so it does have a sharp edge on both ends, but if you're cognizant of that and uh, you're used to it, I've been using that tool for like 20 years and never hurt myself on it. I've hurt myself on many of the other tools, but never that one. And it does a really clean job of uh, giving me the bevels and the profiles that I'd like very quickly. There we go, just kind of smoothing it out, making that profile nice and slender. All right. 
and then putting in little grooved rings, uh, one at each constriction there, one dead center, and then one in the middle between each of those, giving us that pattern. Now I'll remove the uh, guide there. And using a piece of bicycle stainless steel brake line uh, with a couple little handles on it, wrap it around it while it's spinning. The friction will build up and it will carbonize that wood and make it black, which is a real nice effect after you've sanded it down to have those black rings. And uh, as a bonus, uh, it smells really good. You notice I actually don't have my dust collector running because it does smell. It's kind of like incense in my wood shop. So now I'm doing that before I sand, just in case when I'm doing that it jumps off, uh, it won't undo what I've sanded down to a smooth finish. So we're going to start off with some fairly aggressive rough 100 grit and uh, go over it back and forth and also on the ends with that. Now at any time in the process you can stop your lathe and look and verify that you're working with a good piece and there's not a big crack or a chip missing out of it or some blemish that means you shouldn't continue on. But uh, this has been pretty good wood and I'm pretty confident with it. So I'll just keep going. Dropping down to 220, make it a little bit smoother. And you notice we've still got our black lines where we carbonized it with the uh, bicycle brake line. And after the 220, we'll smooth it down to 500. Remember to get the ends on each grit. Great thing about the lathe is it really does all of the work for you. You just kind of hold tools and abrasives and move them around and it does all the work. Uh, that's getting pretty smooth. Now one final step, take some of the sawdust that you've created with your tool and bunch it up in your fingers and rub it against it while it's spinning. An old friend of mine showed me this and it really burnishes the wood up and gives it kind of a polish that you can't otherwise achieve. Uh, and then I'm going to switch over to a little bit of teak oil and we'll polish that into it. If you're uh, Applying this stuff, try not to stand right in front of your project. Get off to the side a little bit because it does fling teak oil and it'll either get in your eyes uh, on your prescription glasses or into your safety glasses if you're wearing those. And it's kind of hard to get off. Uh, so just stand aside a little bit, let it fling out the first real wet batch. And then as you polish it in, it'll stop doing that and, and have a real nice gloss to it. And teakwood oil is just, just really a good finish. Pop that out of there and remove those little end pieces that uh, were up against the lathe edges. And then move over to the belt sander there, or the, uh, uh, clean up the ends. There we go. Blow the sawdust out and we're good to go on a handle. So then we need to assemble this whole thing, which isn't that hard. You just uh, Start from one end. Here we go. We'll grab that quarter inch by 20 all thread, uh, cutting it off at, say, it looks like about 10 and a half inches there. Just cut it on the metal cutting bandsaw. You can hacksaw it or use a Dremel, uh, whatever, whatever you got on hand. And I'm going to cut two of those because I know I'm going to make uh, a set of tongs out of this marble mold. Then we'll clean up the ends so that they thread into the nuts nicely and don't have sharp edges on them. Just kind of bevel down each of the tips. There we go. Lay all of our raw parts out there. So quarter inch by 20 nut and move it up far enough to allow the handle to fit on. And then at the bottom of the handle we're going to want room for another nut, a little bit of space, and then another nut. That would actually hold it down when it's a, a set of tongs. So we'll protrude just enough thread uh, above the end of the handle there, coming out of the wood, to give us basically the thickness of uh, 
two nuts, a washer, and the thickness of the hinge. Just kind of fine-tuning it there, visualizing all those components in place. And then we'll snug that up. All right. Now, as described earlier, we've made this threaded all the way through the graphite portion. So you could just put that thing on and put a nut on the end of it, and it would stay securely. But we're going to put on uh, another nut and a washer at the bottom of it to cinch up against the bottom of it. And then when we put the graphite on, it'll thread on. And then we'll put another retaining washer and nut on top of that. So this thing is going to be really secure. It'll never strip out. And that is the one problem with graphite and small pieces that bear a load is uh, you can easily strip out threads in graphite, a very soft material. So there, my little handle came loose, so i got to snug that back up so I can use it to tighten this thing up. There we go, all the way through. until it's all the way on and there's room enough on top for uh, full threaded contact between uh, the nut and the all thread. There we go, just a little bit of thread sticking up through that nut, nice and secure area and then we'll tighten up that bottom one relative to it. And that'll snug it down. And I'm going to wait to tighten up that top one until after we've assembled the tongs and we've got the orientation of the ladle portion correct. But there is our basic marble mold. If all you want to do is make a marble, you can do that. You can use this here also to put it in and out of the kiln. Uh, but it is a little slicker when you got the tongs and you can grab it from both sides. And you can see we're darn near halfway there. Actually, a little bit more since we've made some of the pieces already. So, in the past, I, I used a, a spring in the uh, spring, excuse me, um, a hinge in the bottom with a spring assembly inside of it. Now, this time I've gone to a rectangular uh, hinge because that's what I found when I went to the hardware store. And right now, with the uh, the lockdown, there's still a lot of confusion in the supply chain, so a lot of empty shelves. But I don't see as rectangular would be a problem. In fact, I, I kind of like it. So I'm going to do these out of rectangular hinges. And we'll have to make that little stopper so that it only opens and closes so much. So here we go. Um, where that goes into the hinge, we're going to tap that. Anywhere you can that you can also, you know, tap the item you're going through and secure it with nuts will help in the future to hold all these pieces together. So here's the shape we're going to go for. Just a, a little kind of a C look that bends in the middle. And we've got two small bolts and washers on the holes on one side of that hinge. I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, we'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. Here are the uh, measurements for where I would bend it on. I believe that was a four and a quarter inch hinge. So each of those is uh, roughly where I bent it. It's miked out there in inches and thousands of inches. Now I don't do a lot of banging and bending on these in my shop so I just kinda threw up this little vise and clamped it to a table to, to do this. If I did it a lot I'd probably get a a cleaner setup for it but all we need to do is put four bins in this thing so there's the first and it's already marked out so we just look at it line it up and then beat it you can use whatever your personal preference for a beater is uh, like that big uh, sledgehammer head as a handheld tool 
It's also really useful for locking down the controls on the vise. They, they tend to need a little nudging. There you go. Fairly clean right angle, and that's a good soft steel. It bends really nice. It's not brittle. It doesn't develop any fatigue cracks right there from this. And you can uh, smooth it out a little bit by hand if you need to. So where those tongs are going to fit in, that is where we are going to uh, tap that hole to quarter by 20 for that all-thread handle. And here we go, putting the two together. Now, in that last section, I showed this hinge here and how I bent it, and I, I put the little knuckle of the hinge on the inside, which is actually going to interfere with where the spring goes. So I did it again with the hinge facing the correct direction. So keep that in mind when you're doing yours. Face the hinge the right direction, and you won't waste time like I did. So you can see the little bolts there and where they've got their washers and nuts that can hold in the spring. The spring is shaped like this, so it'll fit right in, clamp down, almost no machining required, just a little bit of grinder work. This spring is out of an old uh, uh, regulator clock, the old-fashioned pendulum kind of thingy with a wind-up in it. And they, they come with a, a bunch of that spring in any of them. Find an old one, you got probably a lifetime supply of spring material. <coughs> So we've cut off the right length, and now I'm just going to shape it so it fits in there. I've already kind of laid out the markings of, of how I want it to fit. So we'll just grind it rather quickly. And give it a couple of notches where it'll slide under those uh, bolts in the hinge. And really clamp down secure and give this a nice kind of a lifelong uh, spring effect. There's one of the notches for the uh, bolts there. Yeah, make sure that they're deep enough, but go slow. You can always cut a little more. It's hard to put the material back. And it'll just slide right in and pivot into place. And then Put that underneath of the other side of the hinge, and when it clamps down, it'll have a, a spring effect that'll keep that thing in the open position, but mild resistance. So it won't take a lot of pressure to close it, but it'll stay open on its own in, in any direction. So where we threaded that previously, it just threads right in, and we'll just need enough room on the other side for a washer and a quarter by 20 nut. There we go. Now we're not going to worry about the orientation of the uh, marble mold, the graphite section yet. We'll, we'll adjust that very last after we get everything into place because we may need to rotate these sections at any given time. There we go. Nice and snug. Let's snug that down against it. There we go. The hinge effect is not impeded, so we're good to go. So now this is our second side, and it's going to require uh, another extra set of nuts and washers between the graphite portion and the handle portion, and that's going to hold this retainer clip that only allows it to go open so far. Otherwise it would just really overextend and flop open and be, be a rather dismal tool. Now this raw material is an uh, eighth inch stainless steel rod that uh, fortunately my lovely wife has used as bead mandrels for quite a long time and so they have been annealed hundreds of times in her torch when she makes beads on them and they're very soft, they're very easy to bend. Uh, I went to the hardware store and got some brand new ones for her, tried to make one of these out of those and found it very difficult to bend and work. So. Hey, there you go. If you've got a friend that's a beater and you can get their old mandrels, then uh, they're very easy to work with. So we've got a loop on the end, and we're going to close it down 
between these two quarter inch nuts and washers. And then continue our assembly a little bit here. We're going to have to add another uh, quarter by 20 nut and uh, a washer, a wooden handle, and a uh, washer and nut on the bottom. So now we've got basically what looks like our first just marble mold with that extra wire clipped on in the middle. And that's exactly what it should look like at this point. A few more nuts and washers for the bottom there. All right, now we're going to insert that into our uh, hinge assembly. And we'll thread it all the way down until it comes up snug. And verify that you have just enough thread on the bottom of that all thread portion to put one washer and one nut with just a tiny bit sticking above. Yeah, then we'll lock that down in position and that'll secure that side. There we go. And then we'll tighten up the wooden handle relative to it a little bit and then snug down that top quarter 20. And that'll lock our wooden handle in place and the shaft will be a fixed rigid. Should have any more rotation. So we're going to visualize when this thing's all put together how far out you want it to go and then we're going to adjust the height of that uh, retainer rod so that uh, it's above the handles but not too close to the graphite portion. You want it centered near the handle. It'll take less material to do it and give you more freedom of movement up there around the mold area. All right, so we'll lock those down. Now we've got it in position, open it up as much as you think you'd like it, and then we're going to adjust the angle of that rod so it kind of follows the, the curve of the tool as it closes and opens. There we go. So pull it out about as far as we'd like it to go, and then bend it around so that it retains it. Then we'll clean up that bend a little bit with the uh, mm, squeezing tool there. You can use whatever favorite squeezing tool you like. I kind of like these. My, my son gave them to me for uh, uh, Christmas. So it's always fun to use those special tools. We'll line those up now. Make sure that they're facing each other pretty square. And then lock up that top nut. There we go. Full face on. Touch them together. Really kind of fine tune their, their meeting point. And then lock that down. Tighten up that bottom one. And then double check that they fit together nice. There we go. No gap, smooth, even. That was not that hard to make a really handy uh, set of marble tongs that are incredibly useful in the shop. And not just for making marbles. You could be doing all kinds of pieces and components. Uh, and if you drop something on the floor and it's rolling around, you got to pick that up as quickly as possible. Sometimes tweezers uh, can do it. But this is an excellent tool for grabbing stuff that might have fallen and rolled onto the the floor. Uh, very controllable. So we'll do a quick little demo here of how to shape the material with these. Because they're, they're not a hemispherical cutout, there's not a certain one size that fits it. It's just a tapered cone. So whatever material you stuff in there and rotate, it's going to assume a, a spherical shape as you change the angle of your rotation. And also the axis of your punty and, and uh, you know, cleaning up different sides of your marble. So we've rounded off one half of that. We'll throw a little punny on it. And then cut off the material that uh, we want for the marble. There we go. 
delineating that material, separating the, the marble from the handle. There we go. Try not to pull out those long hairs while you're working. It is not necessary and the flame will clean them up just fine if you go slow there. So now we have that kind of pointy and it looks kind of like a football now. Uh, and we will round it out in the, the, the marvering, or sorry, the, the mold one more time. And if you don't get it completely round, you can always change your, your rotation uh, axis by 90 degrees. Sometimes that helps to really round the marble out. But especially in a uniform material like this, just gob of clear, uh, it doesn't have a tendency to uh, do weird things like when you have, uh, say, a cobalt twisty inside of it or something where that glass wants to move differently in one direction than it does another. So this gob of clear uh, becomes a pretty clean marble very quickly in this little inverted cone mold. Here we go. I'm going to punny over to that side, tap that one off, and then we'll clean up that. And there's a pretty round marble right there. Just a few passes at different angles, and uh, we got it. Now here's another marble, a little bit larger one that had some stamped in designs on it from an earlier video just to, you know, show how the tongs work. And they're very similar and the only real difference is, is that you can of course uh, kind of marver both sides at the same time and uh, they make a really good uh, way of holding securely onto a larger marble while uh, polishing off the punty area. So this one has, uh, oh, it looks like uh, well, a bunch of gears stamped into it. Yep. There we go. We'll pop off that punty. And now just holding it in the tongs will heat up the area uh, where the punty was. There was a little uh, shard hanging off of it, so I'm going to draw that off first. Then really heat that area up with a, a fine torch uh, flame. And just kind of roll it back down into the cone and uh, get it to push that down and smooth it out and then fire polish it again and we can just tong it right into the kiln and we're good. So there we go. Very useful tool. I hope you've enjoyed this and uh, you may even want to make a set of your own. It doesn't take an awful lot of tools. I'm sure most of uh, you could find the uh, tools in your shop area to put together something like this. So give it a try and let me know how it works out for you. Thank you and please like and subscribe.